Anita Smith, a Salesforce Certified Admin and Business Analyst, as well as a Certified Scrum Master. I listened to this podcast, <laughs> a fellow podcast listener, being a Salesforce consultant and how they uh-huh. work 20 hours a week, make 200K a year. I think it was possible to even pivot from hospitality to tech. Yeah, certifications, build your brand. So I created a course um, and it's what I wish I had when I first started. I, I just want to share it with other people so that they don't have to go through the same struggles. Do and use and it makes their lives better. I am a course junkie. I mean, if you want to be strategic and you know exactly where you want to go in the future, mm-hmm. I'd say use that. But there's like, there's so many great courses out there. No one expects you to know every single That's thing. I think we're good. Okay, um, so Anita, let me just start off with an introduction as to what uh, the podcast is all about. Um, so the podcast, let's talk Salesforcing. It's a it's a podcast where we Swayati invite Salesforce enthusiasts like you um, to join us and share your knowledge to the wider community. Right. So this is the whole idea of the podcast. And uh, let me introduce you. So for our session today, I would like to introduce uh, Anita Smith, a Salesforce Certified Admin and Business Analyst, as well as a Certified Scrum Master. She is also the founder of Scrum in a Box, a topic that will be discussed shortly. Apart from being a Salesforce and a Scrum Evangelist, Anita also volunteers as a planning committee member for the group Texas Dreaming, and also a mentor uh, in the Trailblazer Mentorship Circle. So Anita, it's great to have you here. And uh, I'm really excited to go ahead and start the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right. Okay, so um, to start off, Anita, I know I would love to know, um, can you share your journey towards uh, being a Salesforce certified admin? Sure, yeah. Um, so I am, I've only been in the ecosystem three years now. My journey started uh, back in 2020. I used to work for a big hotel chain as a revenue manager. So the person that sets the prices and stuff, um, it was a big hotel um, downtown in um, Houston, Texas. And COVID happened that year. Um, Mm -hmm. Majority of our business was a group business and we're connected to convention center. So it was not a good time for us. I was one of the um, team members that was furloughed around, I think, March, Uh, and then finally laid off in um, October. Mm -hmm. So while I was furloughed, um, I was just trying to figure out, oh no, what do I do next? Yeah, I was like, I I don't think I can stay in hospitality um, anymore. So I was jumping around Coursera, all the different sites, trying to pick up skills, um, and then, I I listened to this podcast, <laughs> a fellow podcast listener, um, on it was on uh, Chooseify, which is um, a personal finance podcast, and um, this person goes on who talks about being a Salesforce consultant and how they okay. work twenty hours a week, make two hundred k a year. Okay. Yeah. So I was just like, uh, that that sounds great. That's I want to do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out um, it, he was the, the founder of Talent Sacker, a Salesforce career development program. So uh, he was just starting that up. I think I was like one of the first 10 people to join back in October 2020. Um, and like it, because I didn't know anyone in tech, I didn't think it was possible to even pivot from hospitality to tech. So, so like I, I joined and kind of like step by step told me like, okay, go to Trailhead. This is what you need to study. Um, you know, you need to certifications, build, yeah. yeah, certifications, build your brand. Like you got to change your LinkedIn because that's where recruiters look. Updating your resume. Cause mine says like all hospitality stuff. And um, like, this is how you interview for like a tech job. Um, so fast forward to January, 2021, I land my first job as a Salesforce business analyst at um, Blue Sky Innovations, which is a boutique partner um, consultancy. Um, they put me on a project with um, a big medical device company. Um, so I, I worked as a Salesforce BA for that. 
Um, okay. And then it, it, it's so funny. I, I'm still with the same company, same client. Wow. But they brought me. They brought me back um, after that project ended. They brought me back as a scrum master for a few of their Salesforce dev teams. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. That's again an interesting, you know, twist again in your career, turn in the career from a Salesforce uh, certified professional to a scrum master. That's great. Thank you. And that, that brings me to the next question. Um, and I saw in uh, in your profile, of course, about Scrum in a Box, right? I'm, I'm really curious to know about that and how it has been received so far in the Scrum uh, community. Yeah, so I decided to create a course because when I first started, I, I had no idea. I thought it was like a made up job um, and I couldn't <laughs> find like like there, there's like a lot of stuff that tells you about like the framework and agile and all that stuff. But there wasn't I couldn't find a lot of information on actually how to do the job. Mm -hmm. So I created a course um, and it's what I wish I had when I first started. Um, all right. So it, it's for people who are brand new, um, don't really like know how things are supposed to work on a scrum team um, and, and there's templates and it walks you through all the ceremonies and how to run them um okay. it, it's been good so far um i i've gotten a lot of good feedback um and people seem to be really happy yeah, that's that's really i mean what you said is right and there's a lot of information around about scrum and agile and when you come to the practical sense of it yes it's difficult to understand how do i get started how do i do things in a project so yes um, that's interesting to know Uh, and of course, you know, as a Scrum Master, a certified Scrum Master, now how do you see the intersection between Scrum practices and Salesforce implementation? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's like the most used framework in most um, Salesforce projects. And, and like, it's so interesting because it doesn't have to be a technology project in order to practice Scrum, but a, a lot yeah. of tech companies use it. Um, I, I know majority of the people because like that came up with me practice scrum on their team. So I think most people do it like it's very rare that I hear about like waterfall or, or exactly. I hear that. Yeah, I hear the term agile a lot. So it's oh, like waterfall okay. mix, and agile. Mix, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think that's the stage when you know people kind of transfer from waterfall to agile and then get adjusted with agile yeah you're right yeah. you're right that's it what you said is exactly true i mean uh, right now all of salesforce projects would be running in agile so uh, i do see how that intersection happens there Um, and of course, again, coming to Salesforce and your experience there in, in implementation and maintenance. So what are the challenges or some of the challenges that you've faced in this uh, maintenance and implementation phase and how have you overcome them? Yeah, so my client is a very, they have a very large org with, I mean, there's like 30 plus different Salesforce teams wow. okay. and a lot of, and, of course, lots of tech debt. So um, they have a whole COE and people that have processes in place because it, it's very, it's very hard. Like if everyone is working in the same org, um, so like, you know we have uh, poker sessions and um, a lot of cross team dependencies. It it makes everything a lot slower, but it's the mm -hmm. best way for us to not mess anything up in the org. I understand. Yeah, um, particularly when it comes to implementation, um, it is a bis, uh, you know, business uh, vision that most of organizations have, and it's a big project. Um, so yes. Um, and uh, as an influencer in the Salesforce community, what motivates you to share your knowledge and experiences with others? <laughs> uh, influencer, yeah. Oof, I don't post as much as I used to, but I, when I think of something that like really helped me, I, I just want to share it with other people so that they don't have to go through the same struggles. Um, I mean, that's pretty much my only driver, something that just helps other people. I, I don't like putting just, you know, nonsense, just to talk to talk to like make sure my name pops up. I, I want it to be like something actionable that someone can actually 
do and use and it makes their lives better. Thank you, Anita. And um, in connection with what you said, of course, you know, that uh, goes back to your uh, volunteer uh, uh, part as a mentor in the Trailblazer community, of course, that plays a big part in how you give back to the community. So, yes. Um, and of course, so how do you balance staying up to date with the latest in the Salesforce ecosystem? Uh, link, LinkedIn mostly. Um, I'm also part of some Facebook groups um, from Talent Stacker. Like they, they have two, one for just a normal career development program and another one for their alumni. And um, I actually still keep up with my study group I formed. Um, we, we meet like maybe once a month we actually met last night so we usually like talk about like salesforce news but mostly linkedin um as as with everyone you know subscribe to salesforce ben okay <laughs> sort of, right. yeah understood yeah. understood all right Um, and of course, uh, again, you know, coming to your volunteer uh, part in the Texas Draven, uh, being part of the planning committee, uh, can you tell us more about the significance of that in the Salesforce community? Yeah, so all the local community, the Dreaming events, they're all done by usually the local Trailblazer um, user group leaders. Um, and man, it's a lot of work. I. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool to be part of this team because everyone is very, um, like, established and has been in the ecosystem yeah. forever. And it's it's just like great to learn how everyone everyone works. Um, but oh. so let's see. This was my second year. Um, so I joined them um, last okay. year, and I helped with social media and. Oh. Um, volunteers for day of because it, it takes a lot of work during the conference to keep it going um and it, it's okay. just like been a amazing experience so far thank you Aida. that was great um now how do you approach continuous learning you know and uh, what resources would you recommend for someone who's looking to enhance their skills in salesforce yeah <laughs> i am a course junkie Okay. There are so many courses out there. I mean, the problem is finishing the course. I'm great at I like know. buying them and starting them, but like finishing yeah. is always a struggle. Um, so, you know, I I know people are always trying to get a, a, their next cert or whatever, but I, I personally try to focus on the present, like whatever I'm working on now, I mm -hmm. that's what I decide to like enhance my learning skills on. So scrum master now I, I like took a bunch of courses um i think i'm like in the middle of google's project management course they're giving it out for free so i am doing that but just um focus on getting better at what you're doing now and i mean if you want to be strategic and you know exactly where you want to go in the future mm -hmm. i'd say use that but there's like there's so many great courses out there and of course trailhead yes no, that, that was a good point, uh, Anita, because yes, people can be overwhelmed when they have a lot of courses coming in and, you know, not sure as to where to start and uh, how to gather all the skills that are required for them in this career. Uh, that's true. Um, and of course, a professional, um, as you are a certified Salesforce professional, um, what advice would you have for individuals starting their career off in Salesforce? Yeah, um, don't be scared. There are so many of us who started in Salesforce from like completely different careers. Like I, I know so many people thriving now who are like stay at home moms, teachers, nurses, um, so much. Uh, and just, always, <laughs> there's a hashtag, always be learning. I can't remember the origin. It might be Stephanie Herrera um, who, okay. who originally created that term, but I mean, it is overwhelming when you first get into the ecosystem. You think, oh my God, there's so much information out there. Like, how do I learn it all? Yeah. You, you don't need to. Like, I, I remember being on a call with a with an architect on there. He's like, yeah, that's not my specialty. I don't know anything about that. Like, it, it's okay if you don't know. Um, you can always sure. research later, but no one expects you to know every single that's thing. True. 
Yeah. That's true. Baby steps, I guess. And I think your example, you know, moving from the hospitality sector to Salesforce itself is an inspiration uh, for a lot of people looking to change their careers. That's true. Um, so how do you see the future of Salesforce evolving and what trends do you think would come into the picture with Salesforce? Every quarter we see a lot of things coming up in Salesforce. So what are your views on this? <laughs> Don't know if you heard about uh, AI. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's taking over to, the world. Yeah, I went to Dreamforce for the first time this year and like it was just all AI. <laughs> I know. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think the focus will be on that. But I mean, in order to even leverage it um, really well in your org, you, you have to clean up the data. like. Uh, like if you have garbage in, gar garbage out, um, all you admins out there who didn't add descriptions to to all your custom objects and stuff, you better you're, you're do that. You, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's true. I mean, AI is certainly the way to go and um, that is the future. Um, I'm sure that Salesforce is going to be utilizing it to the max. And um, thank you for your thoughts on that, Anita. And uh, so these these were the uh, few important questions that I did have for you. Um, and that this information that you shared with us is going to be very important and it's very inspiration for a lot of people out there. Um, thank you, uh, Anita. I think that brings us to the end of the questions. Um, I think I had a good time. Um, I hope you did uh, also. And uh, I'm excited to see how this podcast comes out uh, to the la larger audience. Yeah, again, thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. <laughs>